Hello guys and welcome back to 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, a lot of crazy stuff happened. Junpei had sort of an epiphany of sorts, where he uh, was panicking, he was like, oh god, how do we open the coffin? And suddenly, someone spoke in his mind, telling him, or pushing him in the right direction on how to open up the coffin. Which is weird, because he never learned how to open it in this uh, runaround, in this playthrough. So, there's some interesting stuff happening. There's also something that, I don't know if you guys caught in the last episode, where Junpei, uh, he was like, opening, he was trying to do the test thing with the bracelet, he was like, Hey Clover, could you pull out the uh, Zero bracelet, uh, which he never learned that she had, and it's not like he could have detective-ified it out, because if he never went back and saw that the Zero bracelet was missing, so he would have no idea that that's what she took. Unless it was just like a really, really good guess, but that would be weird. Anyways, this is a pretty interesting escape room uh, first thing we want to do is look over at these books right here and yes we are going to have to look at a lot of these different uh, shelving sections what's the deal with these titles they're all just gibberish hey what if we like switch them around switch them around yeah if we move them around maybe they'll spell something Ah, I get it. Yeah, heck, it's worth a sh heck, yeah, heck, it's worth a shot. So you can probably tell just from the top letters here that it's, it's supposed to spell open. So we swap them around. Open here, find bulb. How about this? Hey, I just like putting those books in the right order. Open this thing up. <laughs> that was a piece of cake. Hooray! You did it, Junpei. I guess that turned out well enough. So the letters from the title spell out, open here, find bulb. We open here, and we indeed find bulb. Light bulb looks like it's brand new, and it's really big, so it'll make a lot of light. Powerful light bulb, huh? This will be pretty bright. I might take a while to find stuff. What's a picture book like that doing here? It looks like it's about Little League. It does seem a little weird that it's so different from the others, huh? Maybe you ought to take it with you. This escape room could be pretty confusing because there are so many books that you need to look through. So I'll try to find them. If I uh, get lost at some point, then apologies for that. I'll try to just cut to the most important sections. So I find this book here. There's a baseball on this one. Come on, Junpei, let's see what's in it. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say it's probably baseball st- Whoa! H-E-A-D. This is one of those pop-up books, isn't it? It says H-E-A-D. Head. You mean like where my brain is? Seems kind of weird to have a book with a pop-up that says H-E-A-D. Now, if I turn right here... Somewhere around here... Aren't any other books that look suspicious. Okay. Is it you? Here's another one of those kids' picture books. Yes, okay, I finally found it. Looks a lot like the other one we found. This one has some Native Americans on the cover. Hey, Junpei, take a look at this one. Native Americans, huh? Maybe it's got some- Whoa! Guess it's one of them pop-up books, right? Got the letters L, R, K popping out, popping out of it. Can't make any sense out of them, though. Large, round, and kinky? Nah, that's probably not. So I've got a picture book here with the letters L, R, and K sticking out of it, huh? Alright, making our way downstairs. I might cover this stuff in a weird order, but that's just because... It's a weird escape room. Modern Japanese literature, huh? Hey, there's another one of those picture books here. Hey, we found... Uh, I'll just... I don't know if this counts as spoiler. Spoilers for the puzzle, I guess? We found all three of them. Something about these feels kind of nice, you know? Brings back good memories. Guess even people like Seven were kids once. No shit, you little brat. Hey, guys, cool it. All, all right, I think I'm gonna take this picture book with me. 
It's got a magic wand on it. Okay. So, what's inside? Well, aren't you going to open it? Pretty sure it's just gonna have pages inside smart at- Whoa! Looks like another pop-up book. The book has an S and an E and a dash and a number 5 sticking out of it. I might be impressed if I was 5. S, E, dash, 5 sticking out of it. Next we have... Uh, this. Uh, right over here. If we look at this stuff up here, there are a couple of books on the glass shelf. From the left to right, they say vol volume 6, volume 3, volume 2, volume 4, volume 1, vol volume 5. In the middle of the glass door is a cylinder cylinder lock. You know the kind of lock where you rotate the numbers around until you've got the right ones to open it. Ooh, what the hell is this? It's just like they gave us the answer. Guess I might as well give it a shot. Okay, so from left to right. Because if you're... Because, I don't know, at least in my head, it makes more sense to read it right to left, because that's how, like, if you tilt your head to position it properly, it would be, like, from top to bottom. But I, I get that it's supposed to be left to right. There are a couple of things in this room where I have thoughts that I can't share because of, you know, spoiling stuff, and I'll just have to, like, Talk about it at some later point. You did it, Junpei! Yay! I don't know why, but I don't really feel particularly happy about being praised for that. Whatever. At least the lock's open now. Let's see if we could get it open, alright? We get a light bulb. Powerful light bulb number two. The reason we're collecting all these light bulbs is because if we look over at this center thing right here, we have these things that you're supposed to put the books on. Small enclosure with nine sides, there are three of these things that kind of look like music stands. Okay, how about we try putting these picture books on the stands? Then... Hmm, this is a little weird. And we need to put lights in these light bulbs. There are three lights in this thing. They aren't very bright though. Hey, didn't we find some kind of really powerful light bulb earlier? Why don't you put it into one of those lights? Yeah, or er, yeah. Well, it'll get a lot brighter, but if there, are, but if there are three lights, that means three light bulbs. There won't be much point unless we can replace all three bulbs. We need three light bulbs, huh? Okay, if there. I think there's one more upstairs. Photochemistry. I think whoever said there was that one is need the cover, not the spine. Let's look at it, okay? Oh, hey, here it is. The one that I didn't read in the voices is the one that it has it base behind the books. Look, Junpei, I think there's something hidden behind the books. And we get bulb number three. So now that we've got everything set up, move back over to the stairs. I accidentally went over one too far. Three lights in here. I'm gonna change these bulbs. Now they should... Sheldrick 5. Awesome! It worked! Way to go, Junpei! Good job, buddy. There's something projecting on the bottom. These letters, they seem familiar. I'm gonna see if the game brings it up, but if it doesn't, I will. Sheldrake 5. Sheldrake. Junpei read the text out loud. I think I saw the rest of this collection somewhere. Yeah, I think it was somewhere around here. Let's go take a look. Okay. Seven and Clover walked off, leaving Junpei and Snake behind. Have you heard of him? Sheldrake, I mean. Junpei grinned. Yeah, Lotus told me about him. Okay, that's the thing I was going to bring up. There's a British biochemist named Sheldrake. He has a rather interesting theory. The theory of morph morphogenetic fields, which relies on the theory of morphic resonance. Really? From Lotus, huh? Well, Clover also said something to me about this stuff. She did? Yeah, uh, what was it? The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. <sighs> that girl. I told her not to tell anyone. You did? Why? Junpei's eyes narrowed. 
Look, man, I didn't push it because we were in a hurry, but I'm kind of sick of this. How about you just tell me, okay? Tell you what? Don't give me that. About the experiment. Snake's shoulder slumped and he shook his head slowly. He'd finally given up. Very well. Fine. I'll tell you everything. But not here. Let's move to the top floor. Junpei nodded. With that, they climbed the stairs to the top floor. Snake was silent for a moment after they arrived, then finally crossed his arms and spoke. I suppose I might as well start by telling you why I kept quiet and why I made sure Clover did as well. To be honest, the explanation is quite simple. Zero told me not to. I had little choice. He didn't walk up and tell me, of course. He gave me a message engraved on a card. Snake reached into his sleeve and pulled out a small stiff piece of paper. It looked a good deal like the one he'd shown everyone on the central staircase. So you had two cards. No, only one. Huh? What do you mean? I thought the card just had some rules for the nonary game on it. Yes, it did. And those were the rules I read to you. However... They were not the only thing on the card. There was something I didn't read. Well, perhaps I should say there was something I couldn't read. And that was... Tell no one of the events that took place nine years ago. Tell and I activate your sister's detonator. Oh. Well, uh... Snake nodded. Well, what about Clover? Did she get a message from Zero Two? I don't believe she did. But doesn't it strike you strange that Zero would shut my mouth but not hers? Yeah, that does seem a little weird. To be on the safe side, however, I told her it was best not to tell anyone. Still, apparently she told you. That girl. What's wrong with her telling me? I figured some stuff out with the thing she told me. Hmm. I mean, it looks like the whole activator detonator thing was just a bluff. She's prancing around downstairs happy as a clam now, now that you're back. Snake glanced down at Clover and Seven examining one of the bookshelves. That's very true. I've decided I can trust you. I've decided to tell you the truth. The chance that Santa zero is very high. I feel I can assume Santa doesn't have the time to observe us at the moment. And at any rate, even if he were, I very much doubt he would kill us. Why not? Clover told me about the four-leaf clover. About the words. If you knew about that, then he was in my group during the first experiment. I'm sure of it. He wouldn't kill us. No matter what the situation was. Snake paused and cocked his head as though he was listening to something very far away. His face looked dark, as though something was weighing on him. Hey, uh, Snake? Junpei wasn't quite sure what to say. Snake turned and looked at him. Yes, I know. You want to know what happened during the experiment? Yeah. How much do you know? Junpei relayed to Snake everything Clover had told him. The morphogenetic field and the experiments nine years prior that had dealt with it. How the experiment had taken place simultaneously at two locations, one being the ship and the other being a building in Nevada. How they'd played the Nonar game. He told him everything. And finally, he told him how a girl had died during the experiment. Oh, she told you all that, did she? Snake looked down, his face was tight. A slight tremor shook his body, and he tried to hide it. He was putting on a good front, but even Junpei could tell that he was holding back something deep and powerful. He made as if to brush something from his face and looked up at Junpei. At any rate, I now know how much you've learned. All that remains for us is to determine... Is who did this, and why, right? Yes. Can you tell me what happened? Snake nodded slowly. The people who organized the initial experiment for, were from a company called Cradle Pharmaceutical. There were four of them running the show. Gentaro Hongo, Nagisa Nijisaki, Teruaki Kubota, Kakechika Musashido. Hongo, Hongo was the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceutical. Nijisaki was his right-hand man and did the lion's, the lion's share of the planning. Kubota led the company's research and development division. Musashido was their majority stockholder. 
It was just these four people who planned the initial experiment. Mm hmm. Let me simplify it for you. Hongo designed it, and Ijusaki put it all together. Kubota developed the technology required, and Musashido provided the cash. So it's Hongo, Nijisaki, Kubota, Musashido. Junpei couldn't shake the sense that he had heard those four names somewhere before. Of course, more than four people were required to conduct an experiment of this scale. To that end, they organized a top secret team to assist them with their research. All in all, they gathered ten people or so. Those ten people completed their team and they were able to begin the project. They named it the Nonary Project. The purpose of their experiment was to research the prospect of controlling a human mind through sheer will. The vessel, I suppose you could say, for this control was the morphogenetic field. Why did the glycerin suddenly begin to crystallize? Why did the crystal structure of EDT undergo a sudden change? Why did the rats improve their puzzle-solving skills with each generation? Experiments with humans produce the same results. The more people who know the answer to the question, the more people there who could answer correctly without having seen the problem before. Why? How? The answer is that the shape of the answer has been stored in the field invisible to the naked eye. And through that field, the resonant event transmits information related to that answer. That's essentially the idea behind the morphogenetic fields. But that's just a theory. Can't bring yourself to believe it? Not really. Let's say someone killed another person because the devil told them to do it. Whether the devil exists or has not has no relevance to the murder. They believe the devil exists. Whether or not he does is immaterial. So what matters here is that Hongo believed in the morphogenetic field. Snake nodded. But I still don't get it. You said they wanted to figure out how to control people. Right? That is what you were saying. Yes. So, how are they going to do that with the morphogenetic field? I'll keep it simple. Let's suppose 10,000 people have solved a certain problem. The chance of you knowing that answer, even if no one has told you, will go up. Let's have another example, shall we? Say a million people were to do a handstand right now. Tomorrow, the chances of you doing a handstand would be higher, even if you had heard nothing of this hypothetical mass handstanding. Mankind's thought process and actions are all a part of a resonant event. All of that, all of the resonant events encoded in the fields are projected onto you. Of course, this assumes that you believe in this theory. Do you follow so far? Yeah. But let's say, hypothetically, that there was a person who had the same effect as those millions of people. What would happen? If that one person were to do a handstand, other people would find themselves wanting to do handstands as well. Can you imagine what a person with powers like that would be able to do? Come on, there's no way... I'm not done. Imagine another scenario. Imagine another person. This is an ordinary person. Let's say he does a handstand. What if there was someone who could grab the resonant event he created by doing that, and use it to make other people do handstands? What would happen then? A person who has the power to write to the field and someone who can read from the same. You could think of them as the writer and the reader, or the transmitter and the receiver. What would the world be like if there were people with abilities like these? Junpei thought about it for a moment. So the transmitter's resonant event can be transmitted through the field and sent to the receiver. And then the transmitter can control the receiver however they wish. That's what you're saying, right? Yes, close enough at least. Come on, that's just crazy! Well, if you want to prove that, then you'll have to test it first. At least, that was how they thought. That was why they decided to do their experiment. That was how the Nonary Project began. Snake, Snake suddenly looked very serious. Junpei, have you ever heard of the Gonsfeld experiment? Junpei nodded. Yeah, that was an experiment in telepathy, right? They put a pair of subjects in separate rooms, then they show one of them a picture and ask the other one what they saw. Interesting. I'm impressed. Yes, that is exactly correct. So, why'd you bring up the Gonsfeld experiment? It was used to screen subjects for the Nonary Project. The hospital in a remote town was affiliated with Cradle Pharmaceutical. Hongo used it to conduct experiments on visiting children in secret. Some of them, he found, had potential. 
He began to gather children that showed promise. Children seemed as though they might be able to access the field. Of course, none of them volunteered. They were kidnapped. His face barely moved as he spoke. There were nine pairs of siblings taken, and for 18 children in total. For reasons that were not fully understood at the time, each pair had one transmitter and one receiver. They were split perfectly. As such, the 18 children were split into two groups of nine. The children who were put in Group Q were the ones who, who excelled at transmitting. They were transferred to the mocked experiment building known as Building Q in the Nevada desert. The children who excelled at receiving were put in Group A. The members of Group A were placed on the former hospital ship Gigantic. From the experiments he had conducted so far, Hongo had learned from the following. There are two things that can increase one's resonance with the fields. The first is epiphany. The other is danger. Have you, ever been, have you ever been faced with an especially difficult problem, and thought about it very long and very hard until finally an answer suddenly appeared in your mind? It may seem very ob it may seem obvious to say so, but that is what is meant by epiphany. The information obtained through that epiphany can easily be transmitted through the fields, where it can be easily interpreted. Adding danger to that equation allows for even easier field access. Therefore, Hongo set up a number of puzzles across the gigantic. The participants had to solve each puzzle before they could move on to the next room. Of course, he hadn't forgotten to include danger. More specifically, he detonated a bomb on the hull of the gigantic. The children in Group A were forced to play the Nonor game as the ship sunk. By forcing the children into a life or death situation, Hongo hoped to increase the likelihood of their tapping into the fields. The children from Group Q on the other hand, were confined to the mock experiment building, Building Q. Building Q duplicated the interior and puzzles on the gigantics exactly. Hongo explained the situation to the children in Group Q. Solve the puzzles you find throughout the rooms. When you solve them, transmit that information to the children in Group A. If you succeed, they will be able to solve the puzzles and escape. But if you fail, then the gigantic will sink and your brothers and sisters will drown. Do you know why the astronauts of Apollo 13 were able to return to Earth safely? It was because NASA had access to a replica of the Apollo 13 capsule. All of the equipment, the instruments, everything, all of it identical. NASA was able to replicate the situation the astronauts were facing. By putting themselves in the same situation, they attempted to solve the problems they knew the astronauts were experiencing. Once they had found solutions, they reported their findings to the men aboard the actual capsule. That was how they were able to safely return. It was the same with the gigantic in Building Q. The children from Group Q to use the power of epiphany to solve puzzles they found and transmit what they learned through the fields. The children in Group A, however, had to access the fields to learn how they might advance to the next stage. That is the simplest explanation I can manage. Snake sounded defeated. His half-hearted attempt at derision served only to show how much the story had affected him, just as Junpei was about to speak. Hey! Junpei! Snake! How much longer are you two gonna sit around on those bony asses? Get down here already! Seven's voice echoed up from below. Snake took a deep breath and blinked rapidly, as if just waking up from a long nap. He's right. Let's go, shall we? We don't have much time. We need to get out of here. And soon. Snake headed for the stairs, but Junpei put out an arm to stop him. Hold it. There's one more thing I want to ask you. Are you sure that there were 18 kids? Why? Well, I thought there were only 16. Oh, yes, that's what they said on the news, wasn't it? Yes, I have no doubt that 18 children were abducted and used in Hongo's experiment. After all, you couldn't exactly play a nonary game with any less, could you? Yeah, but... Are you saying that the news got it wrong? Yes, I am. There were two more children. However, they had no relatives that I'm aware of. I imagine no one filed a police report when they went missing. They were brother and sister like Clover and I. The brother's name was Aoi. The sister's name was... Her name was... Snake couldn't seem to bring himself to continue. It looked as if what he was about to say brought him great pain. Her name was Akane. 
that was the girl who died. Junpei felt as if he had been punched in the stomach. His vision went blurry, and his head felt light. He couldn't think straight. Everything was... blank. Had... Akane Kurashiki died nine years ago? If she had, then... Who was June? No. No, that was impossible! It couldn't be true. Akane wasn't an uncommon name. If Snake had known her last name, then that would have been a different matter entirely. So they shared a name. There were many other people who did as well. It meant nothing. It was a different person. Of course it was a different person. It had to be. Junpei shook his head hard and pulled himself back to reality. Is something wrong, Junpei? Your breathing sounds strange. Then Snake had noticed. Junpei cleared his throat and tried to act calm. Uh, oh, no, it's, it's nothing. I'm fine. Well, let's get back down there, alright? Snake raised an eyebrow, but said nothing. He headed down the stairs, Junpei bringing up the rear. He couldn't bring himself to ask. He told himself he knew the answer already, but... He couldn't bring himself to ask what the girl's last name had been. With every step he took, the cold, hard sound of feet against the metal dug at his heart. Holy shit, right? <laughs> every... For the past few episodes, every time... With every episode that passes, we've gotten something more and more insane. Anyways, back to the puzzle. I'm gonna leave you guys to think on that for a bit. I'll just go ahead and keep doing the puzzle for now. Sheldrake... Sheldrake. This is it. This is what the shadow picture was pointing to. But didn't it say five at the end of the shadow picture? Yes, I think we need to find the fifth volume. Well, would you look at that? There's a big red button behind this book. I guess we should press this button. What was that sound? It sounded like something really big was moving. It came from the top floor. Alright, let's go check it out. Alright, we've got some Roman numerals. Uh, let's go ahead and click on this first. This looks like an output monitor. But the letters you type in on the keyboard will show up here. Let's try checking out the keyboard. Well, well, I bet you gotta type something on that keyboard. Yeah, but you can only enter letters. And it looks like you only enter four letters. Hmm, let's see how it works. Guess you need to hit enter once you type in the letters. And you can erase what you typed with clear. Okay, I get the basic operations. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so first one is 13. Now, if you'll remember from the kitchen, one of the first puzzles that we did, uh, we want to go back to talking about bases. Uh, translating, uh, I forget what the base was called. Because base 10, I'm pretty sure, is... Is base 10... I forget what the base was called, but translating it into that, uh, we have the fourth letter, which is D. Then we have uh, 14, which is E. Then we have 10, which would be A. And then we have 13 again, which is D. Great! Dead! Also very funny how, like, keyboards have an enter button, but this is the space bar. It's a bit weird. I mean, I guess they had to fit it onto the DS screen, but I don't know, still weird to me. Yay! It did it, Junpei! It unlocked now. Good job, Junpei. Whoa there, don't get too excited. The best word was dead, remember? Just makes me think that whatever's waiting for us isn't good. So what? Jeez, you're such an old lady. We can't be worrying about stuff like that. I mean, come on, we got it to unlock, didn't we? Let's go, hurry! Alright, let's get this thing open.
As is tradition with this LP, this is where we're going to leave off the episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!